let's move on to the Ecuadorian Trojan horse story. Uh, <laughs> the title of this makes this sound like it's like like a Greek drama or some shit. Um, you guys know that there was an election in, in Ecuador on Sunday. If you didn't, now you do. Uh, I talked about it uh, last week, uh, basically pointing out how Lena Moreno, who's the current president, who, well, kind of is the current president of Ecuador is a, is, is a uh, pro-coup, anti-Assange, pro-IMF, pro-capitalism, pro-American uh, intervention candidate. Uh, he has a, an abysmal popularity in, in Ecuador. People don't like him. And the person that was uh, uh, polling to win on Sunday was um, a candidate by the name of uh, Arauz. Uh, I, I believe it's Andre, Andre Arauz. Um, yeah, Andre, Andre Arauz. He's a, he's a socialist uh, that, you know, this left wing you like economist he's young he's he's a socialist he believes in a lot of what rafael correa was talking about uh which is economic empowerment for the working class um you know making sure that social programs are kept in place uh and making sure that um ecuador's oil is nationalized so that they can they can earn an income from it and that they can take care of their people with it lena moreno decided that he wants to go back to America and that's where he spent the last week of his campaign instead of addressing and meeting with people on the ground to talk about what the concerns in Ecuador are he went to um, meet with the Biden administration and managers of the IMF high high ranking managers of the IMF uh, and if you remember, Lena Moreno got a four billion dollar loan from the IMF after he turned over Julian Assange. Basically, got paid for illegally turning over Julian Assange. Now, the other two candidates, uh, one of them was a, a banker and a former Coca Cola executive, right? Uh, and I think he came in second. But the dude that came in third was a guy named Yaku Perez. Uh, and Perez is, is in it, it, the leader of one of the indigenous parties. And this Gray Zone article, very in-depth Gray Zone article that I highly recommend people checking out, basically points out how he's a Trojan horse for the right wing. Right? Uh, he comes in third. He describes his party as eco-socialist, but pull, basically uses that as a way to get people on board and then pushes regressive ideologies. Here's what Yaku Perez supports. Uh, this guy supports American coups in Venezuela, Brazil, Bolivia, Nicaragua, and Honduras. He's anti-Korea, and he's vowing to basically become the new Lenin Moreno, who, as I mentioned, has an abysmal approval rate. He has an 8% approval rate, and this guy wants to basically be the next Lenin Moreno. This is the guy that's ranking third in Ecuador right now, right? And he's pushing back against Andre Arauz because Andre Arauz is going to be uh, in line with Nicolas Maduro, Evo Morales, the socialist that won in Bolivia, in Nicaragua, in Honduras. He wants to govern by making sure that Ecuador's people are taken care of first instead of enriching himself by supporting American coups. Yaku Perez wants the opposite of that, and he's essentially trying to trash this dude, right? Now, he's backed by um, a couple CIA-run NGOs. Let me see if I can find out exactly which ones. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. He's backed by the uh, government-funded National Democratic Institute, NDI, uh, and uh, a CIA cutout op uh, operates under the auspices of the National Endowment for Democracy, NED. That's always what they do in these pro-coup, pro-imperial, uh, imperialist um, organizations, these NGOs, right? Is they always throw the word democracy in there. So you feel good about it. So when you see it, you go, well, how can these people be for taking over another government and installing a puppet president? 
that does everything that America wants. They have the word democracy in there. They're bringing the democracy. They're bringing the votes. They got the they, they got the cards in the box, and they're putting the things in, and they give you a sticker. Don't you want the sticker for Ecuador? No, I don't. I want Ecuador to have their own fucking elections without American intervention, without Americans fucking promoting candidates that are pro coup. <laughs> Maybe we could learn something from Ecuador and not have corporate control of our elections. Maybe we can learn something from Ecuador and see that pro-people candidates are popular when you legislate on the behalf of people and not on the side of corporations. Holy shit, though, that's what the people want. They become super popular. And when you actually give them a chance without corporate control, without a bunch of fuckery, those people end up being the winners. Holy fucking shit. So Yaku Perez, being that he is, uh, he's representing indigenous communities. That's what he claims. He claims to represent indigenous communities. And uh, he's an eco-socialist. Uh, demonized Bolivia's first indigenous president, Evo Morales. Right? He shit all over him. Basically attacking him for being a socialist. And despite the fact that Evo Morales has like pro environmental policies. So after, after, you know, the, the coup in Bolivia failed, uh, a bunch of indigenous, you know, parties and leaders from various different countries met to talk about like, okay, what do we, you know, how do we kind of move forward here to, to ensure indigenous rights? And uh, guess who wasn't invited Yaku Perez. Why would you invite the guy that shit on the person that's looking out for actual, like actually trying to do something about indigenous rights and the environment? Now, there are some things that Yaku Perez believes in. Uh, you know, he does talk about how a lot of these South American countries like Venezuela, like Ecuador, have to nationalize oil and drill and you know, and that is that is a a, a, a bit of a, a, a issue, right? It's like Alaska. Alaska has universal basic income, but the reason why, why they have that uh, is because Alaska lets oil companies drill there, and they tax the oil companies uh, quite heavily. So they have a way to to give back to the people of Alaska. Do I wish that it wasn't that way? Of course I do. Um, but you know what? I think that should be applicable fucking everywhere where if you want to drill, you want to run a pipeline, you want to have a fracking well, then great tax those companies heavily and then use that taxation to help the people. See how long people will actually want to keep drilling for. See how long people will want to frack. So he's pointed out some of the issues with nationalizing oil because it's like, oh, we're still mining. We're still drilling. You know, yeah, we've nationalized it, which means that we get the income and give it back to the people. But that's still a problem for the environment. And he's right. That is a problem of the environment. Do I wish that Ecuador and uh, Nicaragua, Honduras and all that sort of stuff. Do I wish that they had a... a a more renewable source of energy? Absolutely. But here's what would happen if they found a renewable source of energy that could be, uh, that could work very, very fucking well. You would have fucking capitalists from America. The Exxon itself would fund fucking organizations like Blackwater to, to go invade Ecuador to get rid of that technology. And America would be fine with it. Because Amer most of America's wars are for oil anyway. So this dude is pro-environment, Jaco Perez. He's pro-environment. <laughs> but then he's anti-socialist. And he's pro-capitalist, pro-free market. So it's like, wait a minute. You're an indigenous candidate that shits on indigenous people. You talk about being an eco-socialist, but you shit on environmental socialists. 
and, and socialist period, you're pro-capitalism. What, what about you says that you are what you say you are? There's too much hypocrisy in what you are for anybody to believe that you're actually going to be on their side. Maybe that's why you fucking came in third. Behind the banker. <laughs> This dude's campaign got very little support from from the Ecuadorian people who it got support from are pro CIA and pro coup NGOs. American interventionists gave this dude um a lot more campaign support. Same thing I mean with Lenin Moreno, right? Why would Lenin Moreno go to America and spend his time in Washington DC a week before the election? Because he wants American support, because he wants America to get involved, because he wants America to run a coup to prevent someone like Andre Arauz to take over, put in, uh, you know, pro-Korea policies to take care of people. Maybe offer Julian Assange <laughs> asylum again. And that's the other thing, right? There, uh, Jakub Perez is also anti Assange. His wife uh, has has made like crazy statements, very petty statements. And that's what happens with these neoliberals. You see it with people like Juan Guaido and uh, Carlos Vecchio and all of those things, um, all of those kind of folks. You see them making these petty remarks. Like his wife said something about having a wet dream that Maduro would be overthrown or something along those lines. What? What? That's your wet dream? Imperialism is your wet dream? I don't know, you guys. I'm not an expert on wet dreams. Uh, but I'll tell you something. Is um, America taking over another country's government? Never, never even... Uh, that's... That doesn't. That's not even remotely what gets me erect. But this lady is like, "Oh, American imperialism." That's what I think about right before I ejaculate. Like that's <laughs> what. And these are people that we're supposed to root for because you know the you know the American establishment is going to sit there and talk about Yaku Perez, and they're going to do exactly what they did with Bolivia and Venezuela and Nicaragua and Honduras, and sit there and say things like, "Oh, well, they're not." legitimate leaders of their country when they are absolutely legitimate leaders international election officials and and even G people like jimmy carter have said that the south american countries have more legitimate elections than america does all right i'm gonna look at some of your comments do Joe Biden, I'm not going to ban fracking. Yeah, he signed a bunch more fracking contracts, I believe. Uh, he's taking an incremental look at uh, at climate change because, yeah, we have the time. It's not like we're. It's not like Pittsburgh is getting the East Coast is getting slammed with a bunch of fucking snowstorms. It's not like it's warm one week and then cold another. It's not like that's happening. Uh, the coup in Ecuador failed. Yeah, it does. It did, and I think now uh, I think it's uh, the election has gone into a runoff. Um, I have to double check that information, but you know, they're, they're going to try to put someone like Yaku Perez and Lenin Moreno up at the top. I don't know if they care that much about the banker, to be honest. It doesn't seem like there's, there's a lot of like, Oh man, we got to get this banker or whatever. Like, I don't think that's, um, that's something that they're, they're really concentrated on. Yaku Perez, uh, seems to be more and, and how you hit the nail on the head. It's, it's, it's the indigenous face of neoliberalism. So they want someone that, that fits that minority uh, identification so that then they can use them to validate and push neoliberal economic policy. It's very similar to what the Biden administration is doing, uh, by putting, you know, a Raytheon executive as, 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 uh, uh, you know, the, the, the guy in charge of the department of defense, or 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 someone from the Fed, the Federal Reserve, to to be in charge of the Treasury Department, or someone that's actively supported wars and wants to go steal other countries' oil, as the the person managing the budgets, and the list goes on and on and on like that. They want you know oh, but they're brown, they're black, they're a woman, they're this, they're that, right? And those identities are like they fill, they check off the box. 
but they validate the neoliberalism to be like, see, you can be cool and a minority and and all of these identifications that we're checking off and support neoliberalism because that's cool, man. That's cool, Jack. Todd, good to see you. Thank you for joining us here. You have to realize the, the socialism uh, uses capitalism as its economic systems. Currently, yes. Um, that is that is what's happening. A lot of a lot of countries that are that lean toward socialism are still using capitalism as an economic system. Right. It, it, they're they're not using um, socialism as the economic principle. They're still using capitalism as an economic principle, but they're making it nicer because they're saying, "Oh, well, we tax the rich a little bit more," kind of thing. That I, I believe you see that in the, in the Scandinavian countries. Um, uh, socialism, it, as it's argued by Marx, is rooted in colonialism. Okay, I did not actually know that. Uh, that's uh, decolonialize socialism and indigenize the economy. I like that idea. Uh, and, and Holly's saying that that happened in Chile in 1973. That's something that I will definitely look into. Thank you for pointing that out, Todd. Uh, that that's not an argument that I've uh, particularly ho uh, heard that uh, socialism is is rooted in colonialism, um, but it's definitely something worth looking into. But and that's the thing is like you can look into these things and you'll be like, oh, that's where socialism failed, oh, that's where capitalism failed, or that's where this economic principle failed. How can we better it? How can we make? How can we build off of that to make sure that we don't find you know we don't have these failures um, in our in 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 our uh, economic systems. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows the forkful of noodles live virtual comedy shows uh the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website but if you're also on financial stable ground you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member which gets you free tickets and bonus content and go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to to make any kind of financial contributions but if you can't it's not a necessity most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H -A -H -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.